Okay, so to introduce uh, 11.5, the area problem, this is the, the, the second problem that we face in calculus. Uh, we, we first asked what's the, tan or the, the slope of this tangent line, and now we're going to ask what's the, the area of something to help you understand why this is a really cool problem. Let's say we had a function. We'll say the, the function is f of x equals x squared plus 1. Okay, so this is the plus 1. f of x squared plus 1 would look something like this. Not great, but gets the point across. And so we'll call that one. Let's say that between x equals 0 and x equals 1, what I want to know, what we want to know, is what's the area under this curve. Okay, so that's a that's a really tough question. Um, if it were um, a, a circle, one of the area that's pi r squared. If it were a triangle, that'd be one half base times height. If it were even a trapezoid, we'd want to do one half times base one plus base two times the height, where this could be base one and this is base two. Um, and you know, there's there's all these shapes that have formulas that are that are easy to find the area. But you know, what about this strange shape that has this curved side? This you know, these these all have these uh, fairly fixed measurements. Whereas this has this strange curve. It's this this curve is defined by x squared. So you know, how how can we find the area with that? strange side like that. Um, for that, we'll start with the easiest, the simplest of all shapes to find the area. Uh, it's where our finding area began, uh, I would imagine. Um, the area of a rectangle. Base times height. Okay, That's what, that's what I know it as. I'm going to change it a little bit to be, instead of using this letter B, that's all I'm trying to avoid because we're going to use the letter B here in a little bit. Um, let's just call it W, the width times the height. So we're going to use this shape here, the rectangle, to help us find uh, the area of, of this thing. So how are we going to do that? Well, first let me just grab this. Uh, <coughs> since it is so simple to find the area of a rectangle, how about if we just divide this in two, and we'll let this be in two rectangles. Okay, so this rectangle will be as high as the function is, and then it'll come over here. Okay, then we'll come over to this other rectangle, and the right side of this rectangle will be at the function, and it'll come down like that. That's not So, we have these two triangles, and, um, or not triangles, forgive me, I'm going to say triangles a lot, I, I make that mistake all the time. So now we have these rectangles, and we can find the area of these two rectangles and add those up, and it'll be kind of close to the area. Remember for the, the tangent line problem, we got a tangent, or a, a, a slope of a line, a secant line, that was kind of close to the, um, to the tangent line to the slope of the tangent line. And now we're going to get close again with the area. Um, so, let's let's find the area of those two rectangles. Um, we'll just use blue. So the, the area of this is going to be the width of this rectangle, call it width 1, times the height of this rectangle. Maybe this will be the height on this side. And we'll have this width times this height, and then we'll have the area. So let's let's find the width. Well, let's just for simplicity's sake, we could do this all sorts of different weird ways, but let's assume these rectangles are the same width. Let's just split this up into equal in increments between 0 and 1, and that'll help. 
So let's find this width. Well, it's just there's two rectangles here, and it's between zero and one. So we must be dividing this this distance in half. So this width right here is one half times the height. What what's the height? It's how high the function is at whatever this is. So that would have to be pretty clearly it's one half. So it'd be times f of one half. We're going to take one half, put it in the function, and that'll tell us how high the, the rectangle is. Then we're going to add on this other rectangle, which also has a width of one half. And it, its height is going to be when we go to one, and we put one into the function and see how high that is. So f of one. So one half times f of one half, that's one half goes into x. One half squared is one fourth plus one, so that's five fourths plus a half times f of 1. So we're going to put 1 into the function. 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. So 1 half times 5 fourths is going to be 5 eighths plus 2 times 1 half is 1. So that's 8, 5, 13 eighths. 13 eighths is the area of of these two triangles or rectangles, excuse me. Okay, so the area of this uh, underneath this curve must be a little bit less than 13 eighths because this is, uh, you know, overshooting it a little bit. So how can we find a better approximation? Let's see if this will work. Yeah, we're just gonna grab that guy and move him right over here. We're gonna improve our approximation now. So this was for uh, two rectangles, so we'll put that uh, over to the side. Uh, okay. So two rectangles gives us an area of 13 eighths. So we want to get rid of that. We'll do new calculations. Please fast forward through these parts. They're very boring. All right, so we're back, and we'll use ooh, we'll use gold. So what's better than two rectangles? Let's try four rectangles. We could do three rectangles, but it's easier to split things in half and then half again. So we're going to split it into four regions, each of which uh, correlates to some rectangle. So we're going to take this width times this height plus this width times this height and this width times this height and this width. Uh, that should have been three. This is four times this height. All right, and we're going to add all those up. So what's the width of this rectangle? Well, it is just uh, this total distance between zero and one, which is one, divided into how many rectangles? Four. So one over four. Okay, times the height of this rectangle. Well, this rectangle is just going to be uh, as high as the function is, and this function, whatever it is, it's what we get when we plug one fourth into the function. Okay, plus the area of the, rec the next rectangle. That'll be also one fourth in width times f of what? Um, well, Here's how we're going to start looking at it. We're going to start back here at the beginning, at our um, initial side, the left side. And then we'll just add the widths of the rectangles, however many rectangles we have. So we're at the second rectangle. So 0 plus 1 fourth, 2 fourths, so that'd be a half. Trust me, that's going to be the right way to think about it here in a little bit. Okay, then the width of the rectangle is 1 fourth again, times f of, well, we'll start at 0. We'll go a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, so that's three fourths, f of three fourths. Plus one more rectangle, we have four of them. That'll be the width, one fourth, plus one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. That adds up to one, so f of one. This is one fourth times f of one fourth, that's one sixteenth plus one, so that's seventeen sixteenths. So one fourth times 
Uh, we had found this before. This is 5 fourths plus 1 fourth times um, f of 3 fourths. So that's going to be 9 fourths plus 1 fourth. That's going to be uh, 13 fourths. Oh, 13 sixteenths. And that doesn't seem right. No, that's not right. 16 and 9 is 25 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths. Yes. Plus 1 fourth times f of 1, and f of 1 we found before was 2, so uh, f of 2, no, f of 1 is 2. 2. Okay. Okay, so this, uh, when we add them all up, comes out to be 47 over 32, or close to 1.469. So uh, just uh, that's four rectangles. So four rectangles. That gave us 47 over 32, or 1.469. Uh, let's see what this one was. This one was close to 1.625. Okay, so you can see that. This area is a little bit smaller, and it should have been, because our area is definitely smaller than what we're getting for the sum of the rectangles. So uh, that's a good thing. Um, so now, you know, what would give us the best approximation of the area? Well, it would be if we could. Let's fix that. Let's put this over where it needs to be. Like that. Um, that would just require us to not split it into just 2, or 4, or 8, or 16, but as many rectangles as we could possibly fit in there, uh, to the point where we're, we have like an infinite number of rectangles in there. Right. So let's, let's come down here. And we'll try and generalize this for any curve and any endpoints. So let's say that we have this curve with left side A, right side B. And between A and B, we want to know what is the area under this curve. Uh, and, and remember, we said, well, the, the way to do that would be to split it up into as many rectangles as possible and then add up all those rectangles. Put an infinite number of rectangles in there. Okay, well let's just say that there's a lot for now. There's a lot of rectangles. We're going to want to add up all of those rectangles, the area of all those rectangles, which means we're going to take you know, width 1 times height 1 plus width 1 times height 2 and on and on and on and on up until we get to the last rectangle which we'll call it the nth rectangle and there we'll have it it'll be awesome um, okay so the thing about these so this should have been width two the thing about these widths though is that they're all the same because we're assuming that we are dividing this into equal uh, size rectangles or at least rectangles with equal width so Let's first talk about that width. How do we find that width? Um, well, we, we talked about in the previous example, you, you would just take this distance between A and B, divide it up uh, into um, n pieces, because n is the number of rectangles, and that would be how wide each rectangle is. So you could take B minus A over n times that first height, plus B minus A again over n, still going to be the same width, times h2, all the way down to b minus a over n times whatever this height is. And the heights are going to be different. You can see that just from the picture. Um, so how do we find each of these heights? How do I find the first height, the second height, the third height? And uh, just so that we know, no big surprise, this function is called f. Um, so let's let's just try and start replacing we, the same way we replace this 
uh, w with something else. Let's try and replace, replace this h with something. And remember, each time we did it in the previous example, we let the height just be the height of the function. And how do you get the height of the function, or the y value of the function? You're just going to plug something into f, into the function. What are we going to plug in there? We've got to figure out which x we're at. Are we at this x, this one, this one over here? It just depends on which rectangle we're on. Okay. Um, over here, we'd say we're on the first rectangle. Over here, at the last one, we'd say we're at the nth rectangle. And anywhere in the middle, we just want to say, we want to talk about some arbitrary uh, rectangle. This is the first, second, third, uh, you know, all the way up to the n minus 2, n minus 1, nth rectangle. So, the way we talk about that is to say we're at the ith rectangle. This is, is rectangle number i. Um, so, this x value then would be the, the x value that correlates to this rectangle. So how do we find that x value? Well, we could just, like we did before, in this example, we started over here, and each rectangle for four rectangles was one fourth, and we just added fourths for as many rectangles as we were, as we had. Um, so let's start over here at a. Start at a. We're going to add on a little bit or, or a lot. Uh, however much we need to get to the x that we're on. Okay. Well, the first the first x that we're going to have is just um, a plus uh, one width of the you know one width of one rectangle because we're only one rectangle to the right of the of the side. So plus one of these widths. Now we're going to go to the next one, b minus a over n, that's the width, times f of, uh, we're going to take a and add on how much? We're going to add on two of these, so b minus a over n times 2. Okay. Then, we'll just keep doing this on, the next one we'll add 3, the next one we'll add 4. Let's stop in the in the middle before we get to the, the nth one. Right? We'll come to the ith one. So still, the width of this rectangle is going to be minus b minus a over n uh, times f of a plus a little bit more. It's going to be a multiple of the width of a rectangle, and it's just going to be the ith rectangle. So whatever i is, if it's the first rectangle or the second or the third or the fifth or the one millionth rectangle, that's what we're. Uh, that's how many of these widths we're going to add on to a to get to that x value. All the way up until the nth b minus a over n is the width still times f of a plus b minus a over n times n. That'll just, ooh, that should be n. That'll just work out to b minus a. And so that's not a big surprise because that's just going to put us over here at b. But so, so you can see we want to add all of these up, and this is just a mess. And so we're going to use summation notation to denote all this that's happening. So we'll start at um, i equals 1. We'll start at the first rectangle, of course. That makes a lot of sense. And we'll stop at the nth rectangle. And every rectangle is going to be this wide, and it's going to be this high a plus b minus a over n times i. Okay. And this, this part is going to be just how much we add on to a to get to that certain x value, and we'll take the, the value of the function at that x value, and that'll be the height of the rectangle, this is the width of the rectangle, and we'll just keep doing that. We're going to put in 1 for i, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5. Uh, now, you know, five, six, seven, eight. We're just going to keep going and going and going until we get to n. How big do we want n to be? Uh, if n was a million, that'd be great. That'd be a really close approximation. If n were eight trillion, that would be great. It's just the bigger n is, the better. Uh, you can't let n be too big. There's not too good an approximation. Um, you know, we we would like it to be so that right here is the 
one trillionth rectangle. Uh, yeah, no, and then trillion. Uh oh, we would like the trillionth rectangle to be right there, and then you know keep going from there. There's just not enough ends out there. There's just not enough rectangles. Uh, that would be too much. So you can see what I'm saying is we want n to go to infinity. So the area under this curve would be when we let this sum uh, be the sum of an infinite number of rectangles. Okay. Uh, so we'll work out some specifics, some specific problems in the next video. Uh, but it's it's important to understand this conceptually so that all this stuff makes sense because we're going to be using this over and over. And if you're just putting yourself in a position where you're trying to remember all these things and just plug things in like it was a formula and you don't understand this thing, it's, it's just going to be rough. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.